Welcome everyone to the Yerajan Family Studio at CivilNet. Today we're joined by Jihad Azur, Director of the Middle East and Central Asia Department at the International Monetary Fund. Mr. Azur, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. Uh, I understand one of the reasons why you are here in Yerevan is to meet with senior officials to review Armenia's progress under the IMF's standby arrangement, which was reached late last year. Uh, can you please explain in, so, in simple terms what exactly that is and what it means for Armenia? Well, thank you for having me. The visit to Yerevan is uh, to see the and meet the authorities, but also to celebrate the, the 30th anniversary of the creation of the central bank and the currency that uh, throughout the last three decades, um, in fact, was part of the reform journey that Armenia uh, uh, put in place. It's also an opportunity to discuss with the authorities the progress of the reforms. As you know, the International Monetary Fund has uh, negotiated a program with the authorities to support them in dealing with a certain number of important reforms. Uh, the first review was completed uh, a few months ago with the team, and the team will be here next week to conduct the second review. Uh, it will be an opportunity during these two days to see how the economy is performing despite the challenges and uh, issues that uh, the global economy and even the region is facing, and to commend the authorities for the progress uh, that has been achieved and to look forward also to see how the fund can help Armenia in this important journey of reforms. And the standby arrangement, what does that enable? It's a precautionary arrangement, which means that, in fact, it helps Armenia increase its protections. Uh, it doesn't respond to an immediate need, but it's here to provide a framework. This framework uh, is to help Armenia implement the reforms both on the fiscal, monetary, and as well as also on the economic front. Uh, we think that this program also will allow Armenia to mobilize ad additional international assistance. And it's an opportunity also to see how the fund can provide technical assistance to the Armenian authorities to implement those reforms. It's a partnership that we have with Armenia um, now for the last the three decades Several reforms, uh, several programs uh, were put in place in order to achieve macroeconomic stability. That is very important for any country to prosper, but also to conduct important reforms uh, and important modernization, uh, both uh, for the Ministry of Finance, for the Central Bank, as well as also for other key functions at the, in the state. Well, that's great, and you bring up a few points I'd like to get back to later. Uh, but before I do, your visit also coincides with the launch of a new IMF paper on strengthening monetary policy in the region. Uh, the paper names a number of key factors holding back central banks from uh, modernizing their monetary policy frameworks, from high levels of financial dollarization to transparency issues. For Armenia specifically, what else can you add and what can you tell us? Well, first of all, the role of central banks is more important than ever, especially when you have a situation of inflationary risks. The role of central banks is at the forefront to address this. Uh, reducing inflation is protecting the income of the low-income people and also preserving the macroeconomic stability. Uh, the Armenian central bank has been you know, implementing certain important reforms, both institutionally, that help to increase the independence and to strengthen the mandate of the central bank, to deal with the risks of inflation. And it has been proven recently that the various shocks were uh, absorbed and managed by the policies implemented by the central bank through the flexibility in the ex exchange rate and also through the instruments in the monetary policy that helped uh, gradually but efficiently reduce the risk of inflation. Um, this is also an opportunity to see how the central bank role in modernizing and expanding the role of the financial sector. As you know, there are important developments happening. Digital currency uh, is an important development that, that needs to be accompanied and regulated. All these areas are areas where we and the central bank of Armenia, we work hand in hand. 
Well, I'm glad that you mentioned the exchange rate because that's something else I wanted to ask about. So the drum has appreciated significantly since the war in Ukraine began, largely due to a massive influx of Russian capital uh, to the country. While a stronger dram has reduced the cost of imports, it has also um, put significant pressure on Armenia's exporters. I'm wondering, uh, in your view overall, do you see a stronger drum as a net benefit for Armenia or uh, a net negative? It's interesting that you are raising this question. One of the findings of this paper that you have mentioned earlier, that we tend to have a bigger focus on the level of exchange rate, not on the efficiency of the monetary policy. The, the monetary policy is to protect the economy from external shocks. This is where the exchange rate role is. And the flexibility of the exchange rates allow this to happen, which means that the exchange rate value is determined by the market forces. The monetary policy instruments are to reduce the risk of overheating in the economy and also to regulate uh, that through um, the uh, interest rate, which is the instrument that the central bank use. Those institutional developments uh, have proven successful because if only we look at the last four to five years, Armenia and the rest of countries in the region have been faced with severe shocks. COVID, um, the disruption in the value, global value chains, increase in price of commodities, oil, as well as also food, the shock of the war in Ukraine, all these elements could have derailed the stability of, uh, of uh, uh, the economies in the region. Therefore, the role of those agencies, the central bank, uh, when it comes to managing um, the monetary policy and the exchange rate, as well as also the financial sector, is to preserve the capacity of the economy to respond, reduce the impact of those shocks, and allow the economy to grow by providing stability on the macroeconomic front through price stability, capacity for the economy to grow through investment, and this is where the role of the financial sector is important, and allow the movement of capital to operate. This is very important, and this is why credibility of the policies are important, and the independence of those institutions is important too. Uh, I also wanted to ask about the issue of sanctions compliance. You were talking about the uh, difficult geopolitical circumstances in the region right now. Uh, I understand you have regular conversations with stakeholders uh, across the region and around the world. Uh, senior officials here in Armenia have repeatedly indicated they are working with their US and EU counterparts on this issue. What else can you tell us about this from the IMF's perspective? Well, this is an important issue, and we are cognizant about the risks, as well as also we are happy to provide support uh, to central banks and to the regulators on that front. Of course, this is a new situation that has been dramatically affecting countries in the region, uh, and central banks in Armenia and other countries here in the Caucasus and Central Asia have made sure that, A, they kept the communication with the regulators in Europe and in the US, uh, and they have worked together in order to understand what are the risks, what are the levels of sanctions, and how they should, in fact, make sure that their operations are compliant. On the other hand, also, um, they use this um, shock or, or this uh, pressure point in order to see how to improve reporting disclosure, which are steps in the right direction. Um, we welcome what the central bank here in Armenia and in other parts of the region are doing, and we are ready to help them strengthen their compliance, their uh, regulatory framework to A, make sure that the financial system of those countries are protected, and B, to allow financial transactions to happen. Finally, I just wanted to ask about what we can expect next from uh, the IMF here. I understand there's another delegation coming quite soon. Uh, what can we look for? Well, we have a long-standing relationship uh, with the region and with Armenia. What we are trying to do is we are trying to help countries preserve their macroeconomic stability at a time of high uncertainties, um, severe shocks. 
We are also providing through our programs opportunity for certain countries to mobilize ad additional international assistance and also uh, use this as a framework uh, to strengthen and anchor their policies. Uh, we are expanding our cap uh, capacity development, our technical assistance support. We have now a new center in the region uh, that uh, is destined to provide support for policymakers, for various uh, administrations, in order to help modernize the uh, uh, macroeconomic framework, uh, help uh, various institutions to implement reforms, and modernize the economy. Therefore, we are um, very much engaged um, with Armenia and other countries. We are also very much engaged at the regional level in order to help countries to increase the level of cooperation and integration, and also to showcase what those countries are doing to the rest of the world. And this is also one of our responsibilities, and this is why we are here uh, for the 30th anniversary of the creation of the currency and the central bank. Well, we'll look forward to keeping an eye on all of those developments. And Mr. Azor, thank you again very much for your time. Thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us on CivilNet.